Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to take a system of equations, convert it to matrix form, and then solve it in that matrix form. Now, at this point, hopefully you've all seen system of equations before. Typically what's going on here is we have some number of equations which have an equal number of variables. So the first thing we want to do with this is convert it into matrix form. To get there, let's start off with converting this into two vectors. We can just take these exact same two equations and just put them into vectors and nothing really is going to change from this. In order for two vectors to be equal, each of their elements needs to be equal, which means that this equation is the exact same thing as this system of equations. Now, to move on from this, we need to remember some of the rules of matrix multiplication. Because what we want is a matrix that is going to be multiplied by our unknowns. So our unknowns are x and y. And we want a matrix that we can multiply this by that will result in our values right here. Matrix multiplication says that this element of our vector is going to be equal to this element multiplied by x plus this element multiplied by y. Really, all we need to do is put the x value here and the y value here. And it helps to think of the first column as the x column and the second column as the y column. And each row will be its own separate equation. So our second row here we take the negative 1 in the x column and the 4 in the y column, and we can write those two in, and we'll end up with the second element of our vector. And so we're just going to leave that as 20 times 7. So this is the matrix form of our system of equations. And a lot of the time, we're going to write this as some matrix A multiplied by some vector x, which is going to be equal to some vector B. AX equals B is our standard form. Now, how do we actually solve this? We pre-multiply both the left and the right-hand side by the inverse of A. So what happens here, our A inverse and A together become an identity matrix. The identity matrix multiplied by X just becomes X. So I multiplied by X is simply equal to X. So the effect of pre-multiplying by the inverse of A removes that A matrix. So the equation that we end up with is our vector of unknowns, x, is going to be equal to the inverse of A multiplied by B. So how does that relate to our system of equations up above? Well, it says that x and y are going to be equal to the inverse of our A matrix multiplied by our B matrix. So as I said in the previous video, we have a way of calculating this directly by hand. And the formula that we get for that is that the inverse of a matrix that has some coefficients is going to be equal to 1 over something called the determinants multiplied by D, negative B, negative C, and A. Applying that to our problem here, we're going to end up with 1 over AD is just 2 times 4, so that'll be 8, minus BC, well, that's a negative 1 times 5, so we'll have plus 5, multiplied by this new matrix. So we're swapping the position of A and D, so this will be 4 and 2 along the diagonal, and then we're just taking the negative of the B and C, so this will be negative 5 and positive 1. And that's going to be multiplied by this 20 and this 7. So now what we can do is leave this 1 over 13 alone, but we're going to have a vector of two values, which come from the first row multiplied by our column and our second row multiplied by our column. So our first row here says that we have 4 times 20, so this is 80, plus negative 5 times 7, which is going to be minus 35. For our second row, we have 1 times 20, which is just 20, plus 2 times 7, 
which is 14. Putting that all together, we end up with 1 over 13 multiplied by 45 and 34. And the way we interpret this is we say that x is equal to 113 times 45 and y is equal to 113 times 34. And these are our final answers to the system of equations. So this is how we write a system of equations in matrix form and go ahead and solve it. Now, the one thing that will change is we are rarely, if ever, going to be doing this by hand. This should almost always be done using a computational tool. MATLAB and Python both have ways of doing this very easily. And if you don't have those available, then there are tools online that you can use regardless. So that is all for this lesson. I hope it was informative and I will catch you next time.